There was an article that came out this week from the Times newspaper in the UK, which I think was a bit unfair in some points, but raised many, many important points as well. Um, it talked about the construction boom in Albania, um, which, I mean, you've mentioned there has been a boom in recent years, and, and I mean, anyone with eyes can see it. But the article attributed a lot of this boom to what it calls dark money. Um, and this, we had someone from the National Crime Agency in the UK saying that money earned through organised crime in the UK is partly being sent back to Albania and being used to fuel construction boom, but also to purchase property as well. Some of the figures, uh, 3.7 billion a year invested in Albanian construction and property, 15% of the GDP, but only 847 million of that passes through the banking system. That could be 2.85 billion in dark money. Um, they mentioned as well the number of empty apartments. People need 64 lifetimes to save up to buy a small flat. Um, but they're basically saying that the rate that construction is happening in Albania, there's something amiss here and that money is being is coming from the UK, from the proceeds of crime and is fueling this situation. So those are some quite serious allegations that The Times has made. Um, what are your views on this and what's the reality? Well, obviously, the Times has um, uh, must have done some due diligence uh, to come and write that um, uh, article. What I would say is based on what I actually see, what I hear uh, while in uh, living in Tirana. I, I wouldn't say that uh, a lot of the money that comes and feeds the construction industry is um, dirty or filthy money. I don't think so. There is a lot of, uh, uh, referring to the United Kingdom, there's a huge uh, Albanian community there uh, the vast majority of whom are very loyal Biden citizens and they work very hard and sometimes they save and that feeds into the construction industry here. And it's, it goes the same for other, other countries where there is a significant Albanian uh, diaspora. Then there has been, uh, as, as my colleague was mentioning earlier, they, there is a, an increase in demand from uh, foreign nationals trying to purchase property, especially in the coastline. But now they are coming to Tirana, also going even to areas that I represent to the north of the country, mm -hmm. because uh, tourism in the old days, it used to be seaside. Nowadays is more historic, it's uh, uh, hiking, mountains, um, nature, etc. So uh, for me, the vast majority of this money, whatever the amounts are, I'm not uh, 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 familiar with the figures, but uh, whatever they are, uh, there may be an element that comes from, I don't deny, there may be an element that comes from uh, illegal uh, areas, but uh, this is why we have um, agencies like the National Crime Agency in the UK mm -hmm. and the equivalents in, in Albania, whose responsibility it is to identify when uh, such money is entering the market and it's actually contaminating the industry. It's a very good industry. At least we must remember that in Albania for 50 years we had very poor housing. Yes. So we had, uh, I know we're going back to the first, to the very, begin very beginning of the conversation, but we had only one area block. The only area that was, uh, you could really call housing. Good conditions. The rest, mm -hmm. the rest of the stock was appalling. It was in very bad uh, conditions. Mm -hmm. Now we are building a good quality housing. Yes, at a very expensive rate, at a very, very expensive prices and not affordable for mm -hmm. a lot of people. But there are mechanisms, there are ways which can make it affordable, both in terms of taxation, but also interfering or inter intervening intervention from a local government to make it more affordable for a wider group yes. of people. But then, of course, it's a supply and demand area. It's uh, we've come from a society where uh, one person actually, or maybe a very small group of people decided what happens to every single one of us. Nowadays, it's supply and demand. Yes. So it will play its role. And the last point. Yeah, for me, it is like we need to, I mean, we need to understand that we have a, a great part of the economy, like that is everywhere. We know that um, countries like Albania in Western Balkans, because of the mentality, because of the uh, coming from the communism area, we do struggle with a great part of the economy, which uh, as far as I know, it is 30, 35 percent mm -hmm. of the overall economy. So when you have such a huge part of the economy in the gray, in the gray market, so for sure there might be some misunderstanding and there might be rooms, loopholes for 
crime money. But we need to carefully uh, study and really carefully estimate and try to find where are the loopholes. Mm -hmm. And I do go back to the taxation because a high burden is like incentives you, it's just, just empowering you and trying to say, okay, you cheat the government because why you will pay 15, 20, 25% of taxation, let's try to cheat the government. And when you start with cheating the government, you don't know the end. So it might start with 5,000 euros, <laughs> but it may go much, <laughs> much more. Yeah. So we, we <laughs> need, we, in the Balkan mentality, in the Balkan mentality, we need to understand a lower burden of the taxation, a wider taxation mm -hmm. base. I, this I, is how we work. I mean, I, I can see where you stand, but uh, uh, when regulations are introduced, when legislation is introduced, the main law that is missing in this country is a law that says, apply correctly every single law. That's the caveat. <laughs> exactly. But uh, so, so why should Albanians, I, I think Albanians are no different to the British, uh, to the Germans, to the French, to the uh, Americans. We are exactly the same. So if the law is introduced, I don't think that Albanians look for loopholes and look for uh, ways to, to uh, uh, not to apply the law correctly and, and, and to, to, to basically um, not pay taxes. And uh, uh, we are citizens that uh, understand the law and apply it correctly. But, but yeah, I, for, I, me, for me, it's like, if, if, I mean, if I'm not paying taxes, I'm, so I'm not promoting do not pay taxes, but I'm just promoting have a fair taxation. So I'm not giving what should be given because I do think that this is not fair. So you think and it's too is, high? For me, 15% the of the prices are very high. It, for me, it starts with a capital gain taxation. Okay. If we do fine you know and correct the, in the United Kingdom, I know what it is in in, in Italy. 20, oh. uh, 26%. percent. Exactly. So it's high. You know, no, it is high, but there is some uh, exempts. So if you sell your apartment after five years of owning it and after five years of uh, staying in that, like primary residence. There is zero taxation, so and I, no incentives to cheat the government. Why? Because I think we have I'm to going to declare to the right price. Albania's property market is a lot younger than these other markets, you know, and there are a lot of other different factors at play here, including these loopholes in yeah. taxation, in crime, in, in, in black money, all of these various things which come into play in Albania. It's sort of like a, a hyper market. It's gone from zero to 100 very, very quickly. Um, and I think now, more than ever, like now, now, today, yesterday is the the time that we have to start putting these measures, these changes, yeah. these policies in place, because otherwise we have a demographic problem in Albania. Yeah. People are leaving and this is going to continue Absolutely. unless it gets better. Something gets done and it, get, it gets uh, better, which... Uh... Let's see.